How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today finally got the uh, Step 39331 Pike review. God knows why they give it a code name every time but yeah that's probably the last time I'll ever say that. Uh, I'll just call it the Step Pike. But yeah I've been uh, sending it around the course seeing how it stacks up against the others and uh, we'll get stuck in. Uh, the engine all over it, I mean I'll go for the bottom one, it's S plus on the power and to be fair the power does feel pretty decent. I've gone for the high range gearbox as I usually do. Uh, suspension wise it has raised suspension, it doesn't, it raises it a little bit but it's not as noticeable as on some trucks. Now as for the tyres, the one of the main issues is the 43 inch tyres are the biggest ones which are pretty small in the scheme of things just like with the way the game scaled and everything that's yeah definitely on the smaller side um, the tyres as well you've only got two lots of muds uh, these two MHS2 and MHS3 I don't really use them either I just normally pick by the uh, tread pattern by them uh, but it's also got no change or anything either so it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass on any maps that yeah are like snowy maps um, spare tyre, I'm not equipping it at the minute, but it does actually sit quite nice and flush. As for the snorkels, you can see you've got one on the bonnet and then one that kind of sits up behind the cab. I'm obviously going to go for that one because it's like the taller one of the two. But when you go through these like add-ons, I believe it has just about every add-on, maybe not the metal detector thing, but yeah. When you put the fuel tank on it, sort of, well, it won't let you, it's locked because it says like the snorkels in the way basically. Also has a roof rack uh, that's I think 150 repair points and about 80 fuel, so yeah, it's pretty decent. It's a little bit extra, and then the sideboard bed as well. It's got its own unique one, but it's got 60 fuel. You can see the jerry cans at the back, which yeah is another little cool thing. So fuel wise, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm gonna leave it off for now though, like just yeah, have it raw. <laughs> Sideboards off, condoms off, and uh, yeah, keep it that way for now. Um, the what's it called sun visors uh, I've gone for that one because actually I quite like the sun visors but I don't like it when they kind of restrict the top end of the uh, windscreen but that one's not really doing it too bad as for add-ons there's like a beacon I've gone for those fog lights as you get three rather than two uh, the front bumper that's the stock one and it sits the most flush you can see that one sticks further out and down so does that one and so does that one I actually quite like the look of all the bumpers though to be fair obviously that one's pretty smooth and uh, like pretty discreet. That one's got two extra fog lights. The middle one doesn't have any extra and then that's got two square like or rectangle uh, fog lights. Again I'll just keep the stock one on because it does sit the most flush. Uh, oh I think that was just like horns and that. I don't usually bother with them. As for the exhaust I've left the stock one on. You can't the camera doesn't rotate very well in this view but you can see like it's just kind of in the middle of the chassis and it just squirts out the uh, the smoke underneath. If you do go for one of the other exhaust, one sticks up quite high, the other one kind of just about sits level with the roof so it shouldn't cause you too much hassle if you roll. Uh, alloys, there's only two lots. I've gone for the ones with that's kind of got holes in the, uh, the alloys. Uh, paint job wise, I've got a custom paint job. It's got a horse on the side. It's got damn professional. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Red Dead Redemption. I don't know why. Uh, it's got some eagle flying. But yeah, overall, I quite like the colours. I think they've done a pretty good job with some of the recent uh, custom paint jobs. And then you got the black, but it's quite a faded sort of washed out black. Uh, Grey and the white. Again, you can see the truck still looks quite sort of rusty and used. And then these custom ones, you've got blue and white. It's got step written on the uh, bonnet. Double blue, uh, yellow and green, red and black and then orange and black. I quite like that one. It reminds me a little bit like the Tega uh, paint schemes. And uh, yeah, we'll go outside and have a look. Just make sure I've got it to the to the right time of day. Looks wise, I actually think it's a, a pretty nice looking truck. You can see the fuel tanks sit quite nice and flush with the cab, so they've never really been an issue catching or, you know, it's whatever's going to catch on them is going to kind of catch on the chassis anyway. The rear of the chassis looks long enough to where it's like it can handle a sideboard and you could still get a trailer and stuff like that. But again, the tyres are pretty small, so it's the truck's well proportioned, but it's a little bit smaller than you'd think, <laughs> which is not what she said. Um, yeah, on the interior, you got a mirror, a uh, rear view mirror there. It's kind of like looks a bit odd, sort of just sits in with the uh, the front of the truck. You've got a window at the back though, so if you're doing interior like first person view driving, I can see the uh, the garage behind me just fine. There's a little mirror over the other side, Don't, it's not really too useful to me. To be fair, that mirror is pretty good, you can see rear tyres, and then when you stick your head out, I can see the whole garage door and the exit sign on the other side, so 
in that sense, it's uh, good views. And the horn, oh, wrong button. Yeah, it's a little bit, like, it's not a horrible horn or anything like that, but it's a little bit just a normal, average, squeaky horn. Uh, as for the revs, a bit of an odd one. Like, when you start it up on tick over, it sort of jumps pretty immediately to about six, but then it'll slowly tick up to about six and a half. But then you can see now, when I'm revving it, the needle doesn't move at all, so I'm assuming there's something going wrong with that. It's weird though, when you look at the actual rev counter thing, it idles at six and a half, I think it revs up to about a thousand or something anyway. But yeah, it doesn't move at all whether you're in low range, high range, auto, whatever. So um, yeah, as a set off there, the turning circle's a little bit sketchy. And it feels a little bit slow, again, because even in high gear, the tyres are like quite small, so for one revolution, you're not travelling as far. Trailers, though, I believe it can have every trailer, because it's got the saddle high, saddle low, and then obviously you can tow stuff behind you as well. Uh, turning here, you more get a bit of understeer there, but feather the throttle a little bit, and uh, it went around that corner, alright. Going along here, it's actually not too bad, because some trucks along this, like, dirt road section sort of get you can see it starts holding it back a little bit there I nearly I think it was in this attempt uh, nearly put it in high gear there but I just left it in auto because it's actually doing all right and then going through this uh, muddy section again pretty off to a pretty decent start it was keeping quite a nice pace there now it sort of gets bogged down which again I think if it did have bigger tires it would help a little bit but I do like that it didn't try and kick me out of high gear or anything so it's pretty lenient as far as the high gear goes. I just uh, not. It might have been a better option to change it to auto there, but just for the sake of testing it, I left it in high gear. And yeah, it eventually got through the other side, and uh, you can kind of tell when it finds its grip again and starts flying. So yeah, for, uh, sort of a nice little uh, start to it. It was doing all right, even going down these dirt roads really, which are sort of the old school dirt roads, not like the ones on the Phase Eight maps. Which I like both of them, to be fair. Uh, going along here to kill a tree, it's not the heaviest of vehicles. You can see when I hit the first tree, it kind of at quite a lot of speed out the uh, the vehicle. So you won't be hitting like multiple ones in a row. But in high gear, it does pick up its momentum again pretty quickly after you hit the first tree. I did miss the next tree, but I've got another clip of hitting trees, so it's uh, not too much of a loss. Going around here, I already knew it was going to do this. Uh, yeah, hit this patch and it bogged down. You can just see though when I sort of zoom in a bit, the bumper's practically scraping like the floor. Um, again, because of the smaller tyres, 43s. Preferably, but the thing is, when you look at it, there's certainly enough room on the front wheel arches to fit slightly bigger tyres. And even with the rear axles, I don't think you could go too big. <laughs> That's what she said. But you could definitely fit a few a few more inches before like the rear tires would be touching each other so yeah i think i don't know 45s 47 or any more would be sort of better really because the maps just kind of scaled for say 50 51 inch tires are usually pretty decent uh going along bumping over the rocks uh, you get the odd little one suspension damage nothing too crazy but the rear suspension particularly is quite hard and springy so instead of like it absorbing it you sort of it can flick your truck up a little bit and I reckon there'll be situations just here and there where if you hit a bump slightly wrong it's probably gonna end up like flicking your truck over it's not really been a crazy issue or anything but I just noticed that it is a little bit springy on the uh, the back end there clip that anti-terrorist barricade but not quite as much as I wanted but I did hit it I also didn't really want to delete my engine just before I get to here the first bit of mud again is just overly restrictive for no apparent reason but it also does highlight uh, again with the size of the tyres like the bumper wasn't too far off it was almost scraping the mud once I got out of like the first bit is sort of super mud really but um, the middle travelling over here is more decent it didn't really get swept on by that current just behind me as well sometimes that can carry the front end of your vehicle away even if you're steering against it it moved me a little bit but nothing crazy compared to what some vehicles are uh, how it like how much it affects them so yeah this was ramming the uh, the trees in the farm I think I rammed nine trees over before the engine started dying uh, I did the other trees I rammed eight over before the engine started dying I was actually testing the bumpers to see do they make much difference but it's sort of hard to call there wasn't a lot in it even if they do 
the one when I had the bumper on it helped. See, this is a prime example uh, why I like chain tyres. Going through the snow at the start was fine. It was about the same as all of the other vehicles. But yeah, when it comes to bumping over these barriers, that was a little glitch there, not on edit, but <laughs> it worked out quite nicely. You can just see it's that last little bit. It's only a few percent because as soon as I stick a winch on that tree, it didn't even rip that tree out of the ground. But yeah, that's where I personally feel like chained just help a little bit. But you can see, considering the size of the tyres or lack of, the fuel tanks didn't catch there. But again, it just it's close. It wants to. But it just can't quite do it. As soon as you get a winch on though. And it's fighting me a little bit there, but eventually it bumps over. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they've not put chained on, to be honest. It seems I was gonna say an oversight, but I don't know, it wouldn't surprise me if they kind of know full well they've not put chained on, but yeah, it just seems an odd thing. I don't I just don't know why they wouldn't. It's probably not as bad as like when they added the Zix and didn't give it chained and we had four maps that were all snowy maps, but still like there's going to be maps in the future that I'm pretty certain there's going to be some snowy maps there's obviously you can go back and do other maps for people who are newer to the game anyway you're going to have uh, more snowy maps that have still got missions to do and all the rest of it so yeah it's just a little bit of a shame because stuff like this climbing up the rock it wasn't too bad there but there is little situations where uh, personally I think it, it does help at least it'd be nice to have the option but yeah, overall, it managed to climb up that rock, it got down the other side, it didn't really beach itself or anything, managed just about to bump over that rock as I uh, dropped off the ledge as well. And then jumping these pipes, I thought it might be an issue because the tyres were a little bit smaller, but it took a bit of a hit of damage, but we actually, uh, it bumped the nose up just fine. Again, the bumper sits quite clear, so it, uh, in that sense it didn't have much of an issue, but you can see now is like the rear tyres just this is about the closest I've seen a vehicle look like it's about to just bump over the wall any second but never quite did well at first for about 15 20 seconds whatever it was uh not wanting to go I think eventually yeah sort of just jiggling around left and right and it eventually bumped itself over but that's another case where I do think chain tires would have just had that little extra grip a little uh, pinch on the wall and flick itself over a bit easier now going through here, I'm not 100% if they've changed the trees a little bit or not. Maybe it's something to do when they added phase 8, because there's a few, like, the downed trees anyway seem to be a little bit more restrictive. But I came through the other week with that first of the Wolfpack vehicles I tried. Um, like the 47X 1424 or whatever it was. And that got caught a bit as well, and this did at first. So, I don't know if I was just getting a bit unlucky. It, did, it wasn't as bad as the, uh, the Wolfpack truck I did, and it drove through there, uh, once I've found the right line it seemed to go through it right, but yeah. Normally you sort of can burst through on the first attempt, unless it's like a big bulky vehicle with snorkels that get caught quite easily and stuff. But anyway, next up is the, uh, the cargo test and turning in this yard, and this highlights it pretty well that the turning circle is definitely not as good as like other vehicles, I'd say overall it's below average, considering that it's not a very big vehicle either to begin with, so I reversed it up had another go where I was kind of blipping the throttle now just because if you're a bit easier on the throttle it kind of helps uh, tighten the turning circle up a bit but even then I still had to kind of scuff off the wall and yeah it's not the end of the world but other vehicles certainly can do the u-turn they clip normally like the snow banks that are in between those garage doors but they certainly don't need to uh, hit the wall and most of them I can like I just floor it and do a u-turn whereas yeah this one I had to have another attempt and just kind of blip the throttle a little bit so yeah it could do with a bit more steering in an ideal world anyway like I said it's not to the point where it's felt like it's uh, been a major hindrance all night or anything but not having chain tires uh, I'm kind of bouncing from snowbank to snowbank as I'm driving down this road and then it highlights it pretty well now when I try and turn right it's just the back end starts skidding, there's no grip for it to bite in, so the trailer's like, just the weight of the trailer carried on going down the road really and just sent my back end skidding around. And then going over here, I started getting stuck now and I was trying to, I don't specifically know why really, because as you can see, the, the, uh, the fuel tanks aren't catching or anything, I don't believe any of the chassis is catching really. Dropped it down in low range, I mean it seemed to help eventually, but it wasn't 
instant. I don't know if I got lucky or if the the low range did help really, but um, yeah, once I sort of got moving again, got over that. It's that hump really. That's where not only does it catch you quite a lot, but it definitely transitions from sort of normal snow to kind of super snow there. Now I've got these bloody roots sat in the uh, the road as well here. Which, to be fair, they look like they just kind of phased through my tyres. They didn't catch on the fuel tanks again. They didn't really cause too much of an issue. I was just eyeballing the revs at that point. And, uh, yeah, throughout the night I was keeping a little eye. They seem to... the revs sit... it's sort of just over 600. It might be 625 to 650, but... Whether, like I said, whether I was in low range, high range, all sorts, I didn't really notice any movement on the uh, the rev counter. And then again, the turning circle, I kind of cut on the inside of the corner there. Normally I do go a bit wider, and if I did, I probably would have ended up crashing into that blue trailer to the uh, right of me. But going along here, it's kind of super snow down here, and it can be a little bit iffy for some of the trucks when they're in high gear. But again, not only is this pretty lenient in high gear, yeah, it keeps a nice pace to it. It's actually, like, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but slightly above average for it as far as being allowed to sort of stay in high gear and keep a decent speed going down there. It didn't just start chewing the holes in the ground and uh, wheel spinning like crazy. So, yeah, overall pretty pretty decent, but again, it's... I'd kind of probably knock this off the list of vehicles I'd want to take to a snowy map just for the fact that I can't have chained. And obviously in snow it doesn't really make too much of a difference, all the dirt roads, but it will when you're going down like the actual sort of just tarmac roads that have actually got like black ice all over them. Which bit me a few times, I remember in uh, the Amore region thing like Erska River and all that when I was in the Zix. Uh, going through there, you c again, because the tyres are quite small, it does sit a little bit low, so it certainly noticed uh, when the water went from like shallow to deep. And even that Wolfpack truck, again, the other week, went through there kind of more consistently and smoothly than this uh, did. And then turning around the corner as well, I had to go a bit wide and I kind of hit the rock. And then I put it in high and I think the back end just kind of flicked out a bit, but, so I just reversed, went to have another go. I don't really know why I took engine damage there, because I'm pretty sure the front made it through. I had clipped the back of it, but yeah, it was a bit odd. I just noticed it when I was doing it, that it was a bit odd to take uh, engine damage in that case. But overall, that section there is definitely like super snow, so I wouldn't expect to fly through there once you get to these tracks running down here. It kind of goes pretty normal. Again, though, with the steering, I was kind of blipping the throttle a bit just to make sure... You do kind of sit in the ruts of the road there though, so as long as you can stay in them, it, that'll kind of adapt your steer into whatever, however tight the corner is really, within reason anyway. This is another super snow patch, but it gives me time to remember to uh, go into the interior view. That smallish conifer tree that was in front of me, it never really blocked the view of that, so uh, overall light like, view over the front bonnet and everything is not too bad. Again, yeah, flinging my head around, never look where I'm uh, <laughs> driving half the time, but yeah, views all around are pretty decent. There is like a split screen at the front, but other than that, it's uh, there's not like massive A pillars or anything that are hogging too much of your view. Keep it pinned, and uh, yeah, like I said, overall it travels quite nicely over snow, really. And even going through there, it didn't catch its front bumper. But again, went a bit wide, probably not the end of the world, because it's like a bit of a muddy patch there, but um, yeah, I couldn't have made the corner any tighter, really. Going through here, I thought it was going to zip through, but about now it started bogging down, which is still not bad. There's a f fair few vehicles that really don't like that section. There is other vehicles that fly through there a lot easier and keep the pace in high gear. But yeah, again, slightly above average, I'd say. But you see, now is a good example. One with the smaller tyres, it obviously will just generally sit lower. But once I crashed then as well, I slid over to the left quite a bit. And again, I think this is a situation where chained would just... Chained bite into these sort of rocks better, I think, than muds. And uh, I think again, yeah, I sort of slid over. It's probably a combination of, like, the, uh, the lack of turning circle. But as well, once you just clip the lips of the rocks, it... Yeah, it makes you slide over, which... Yeah. It's one of them, I can't really test it either way, because I haven't got the chains to test it, but 
That's my gut feeling based on all the other vehicles I've driven over the uh, the years playing this game. It's pretty funny this game. It doesn't feel like this game's been out for two and a half years. As far as the actual concept of the game, I, uh, yeah, not any different. I'm just, like, not any more bored of it than I was. Uh, driving through the snow is one of them. Like, it was doing alright, but um, you get little patches going along there where it sort of lets you boost up the speed a bit. It made it over that uh, tree stump, though, which kind of... It did clip it a bit, but there doesn't appear to be anything particularly on the underneath of the truck that's catching stuff, which is good. I quite like that. As I said, the fuel tanks sit kind of flush enough to where they don't really matter either. Going through that snow, it got a little bit overwhelmed. It's not the worst trip over there, but it's not the best. And we made it anyway. It wasn't any significant hassle. Uh, yeah, next up, the old uh, Devil's Mud section, which I already didn't have high hopes for. Just again with the, uh, the tyre size. I think that's going to be like one of the main factors or not. I don't want to keep saying it, but it's one of them as I'm uh, testing each different terrain and sort of section of the maps that I go through. That's kind of the the most significant thing really, which like I said, it's just as you look at it, they could definitely fit slightly bigger tyres, so it would just be nice if they did. Um, it was crawling very, very, very slow, so in the end I just flung a winch out, because that's what I'd do. I'm pretty certain it would have just stopped eventually. And it made it decently far, and there's certainly vehicles that have uh, not made it as far as that. But yeah, it's there's definitely vehicles that have uh, kept a better pace than that as well. So going up into the mountains, hit a bit of a bump there. I kind of feathered the throttle, I'm sure, yeah, I stood there. I partly put that on me, I wasn't like just a truck purely kicking me out of high gear. Starting to lean a bit there, but it, it's not too tippy for a vehicle, I will say. It's not too bad. Again, as an example, the last one I did, the Western Star. Uh, that tipped there a couple of times. I went for quite a harsh nose test here because I figured it'd uh, be able to. I thought it'd probably catch its bumper, but I figured it'd be able to sort of push its way past at the minute. But yeah, it didn't. It actually dug in. There's a recovery truck driving past my house right now, like an old one from about the 1940s. Um, yeah, so I just had to reverse a little bit and again clip the bumper, but it actually made it up that time. got over there. Beaching wise it's not too bad. It's obviously possible if you find a ledge that's like sharp enough. In fact, perfect example of you right now. Uh, yeah, there. With a bit more run up and that you'd soon skid over it quite easily. It's not really that it catches it's just if the, the angle is physically too sharp to reach between the first and second axle then yeah, it's going to beach it. But if you keep momentum it's, it's not really an issue. It's not been an issue for most of the night. Uh, roll test, I've got close, but you see there, it was just an example where it was a little bit springy on the suspension. So it just kind of bounced my uh, my front end round just enough to where it then landed on the other side of the tyre and just rolled over. So, sending the goddamn horse. And I noticed now, it wasn't particularly difficult to flip or anything, but it's dragging along its side a little bit there before it decided to flip. Overall, it's not been a major problem. It's certainly, uh, like for example, the bloody bandit things a nightmare to flip back to its wheels. Yeah, I mean, I've flipped it various times throughout tonight, so I wouldn't say it's been a particular issue, but I just, the fact that it was thinking about just sliding along on its side, I'm, uh, yeah, not too keen on. <laughs> I just want to see them tipping straight away. Climbing up here, though, without the chained, it's a little bit iffy on that, like, bare rock bit, but overall, like, power-wise and all the rest of it, it can, uh, it can haul itself up there. You see there, it started skidding off to the left a bit, it starts tipping. And then we had a roll, you can see it bounce on its suspension a bit there. And then after clipping this tree, it starts going mad. I was like, what the hell? It starts trying to swim back up the hill on its roof. It's like the most overdramatic Hollywood death. <laughs> it's milking it. Serves an Oscar for that one. Uh, yeah, a bit crazy. Not particularly sure why it decided to uh, start doing that. Uh, there's a few vehicles I've done it before. I think the off-road dolphin started doing it once on White Valley. 
And going up this hill, again, is another example where chained, I've had it in various videos before, um, I'd be able to drive up this section with chained, they bite in enough to the snow, whereas with muds, you kind of got to slip over to the left a bit where it gets a little bit less steep. And again, it's not the end of the world, I'm, it's still pretty steep in the scheme of things, so 98% of the time it's not really going to be an issue, but every now and then there might be a, an issue where it, yeah, it now matters. So leaving, uh, what's it, Zimnagorsk, I think it is, heading to Quarry. And overall, like I said, power-wise, it feels pretty decent, so I, I can't really complain that. It's S+, plus, so I don't know how much it's in S+, plus, if that makes sense. Like some vehicles, I kind of imagine, if there was more notches above S+, plus, if they did S++, plus plus and S++, plus plus plus, I think some vehicles would uh, make that category. But yeah, the fact that it's uh, power has never really felt like an issue tonight, so I can't really uh, fault it for that. In high gear going along here, not terrible, quite a lot of vehicles start to bog down now, but I do like the fuck, my phone started playing. That's pretty weird, started playing a video by itself. Um, yeah, uh, quite a few vehicles start bogging down in there, but the fact that it let me stay in high gear, I did put it in auto eventually because I think it was wheel spinning a bit, but... The fact that I had the choice, I quite like that. And yeah, it made it over there, even that little like water bit at the end that the loaf's just gone through. Some vehicles start to bog down there, whereas this uh, didn't. I'm going along the quarry now, there's no real issue, certainly with the trailer on. It's not bouncing around like a nutter, it's not like it's trying to lunge to the left or the right or anything. It's pretty smooth travelling down there, even when I'm uh, bouncing over stuff. And I think with the trailer on, because it's more the back axles that seem a little bit springy. It was probably partly because when they have no weight on them, but you know, once you add a trailer, it's not really much of an issue. You see it beached a little bit there, but I did, I did go for quite a tight angle there. Normally I can go a little bit wider before I go down, but yeah, fancied my chances and uh, it went alright. Made it down there. And even going through here, again I'm in the high gear, it's keeping the pace pretty nicely. A lot of vehicles can bog down there and even if they will let you stay in high, they'll kind of just go, you know, two mile an hour and start wheel spinning. Whereas this thing uh, kept a decent pace, and even once I put those uh, slabs in as well, it still kept ploughing. I even did it, like, really quickly just to try and stay in high gear, and it let me. And, uh, yeah, overall, I'd say pretty decent through there. Just get the uh, goddamn horse. Let's move back up just in case if I need to fling a, a panic winch out. It's like a mobile winch point. And I... I don't think I stopped there, I'm sure it was when it was changing gear or something, it just, yeah, and it did it there, and that was it. It's not the end of the world, but it's, notice it in a few minutes as well, it rolls back quite easily. Once it wants to change down the gears, it, uh, yeah, it, it was rolling back a little bit. But to its credit, considering it's got fairly small tyres, and again, it's a well-proportioned truck, but it's smaller than you think. It's one of them. If you could put it on like Microsoft Paint or <laughs> whatever the modern version of that is, if you could kind of make it 120% size, it'd scale up quite nicely and then it'd have roughly 50, 51 inch tyres, etc. But um, yeah, it's quite a small compact truck, but overall, like I said, the proportions suit it pretty well. Now, I actually managed to keep decent pace going up here. I hit uh, it started making me stall there. Fortunately, I was pretty quick on the uh, the handbrake, so I didn't really roll back that much. But then as I was getting to the top here, you can see the front end skidding around a little bit. <coughs> it's not the end of the world. See there, though, rolling back. Um, maybe with a roof rack on the top of it, it might help. I don't think it'll do a lot, though. It's just one of them. Once you've got a trailer, especially with the slabs on, there's obviously quite a lot of weight now on the rear. And when you're going up a steep hill like this, it's just the nose gets a little bit light, so even though I was trying to keep it in a straight line, whether you're steering or not, it's just kind of fighting uh, against the steering, and it just sort of wiggles around left or right. And again, I partly let it roll back there, but I certainly didn't plan on letting it roll back that much. It was just a little bit slow to kick the revs back in. It's hard to know what the revs are. It's, it's hard to know in this game like when you watch the rev counter, some rev slow, some rev fast. 
it's hard to know whether that's actually accurate to what the game's actually giving you in terms of power and how quick it applies it. But I could say, yeah, as it plays out, like, it definitely... I'm assuming it'd be a very slow rever if it was the case because of how it takes a second or two when it's rolling back before it'll uh, give you some juice in whatever gear it's decided to drop into. And uh, yeah, I think in the end I flung a winch out to the goddamn horse. But I made it up there the first time, strictly speaking. I could have put the handbrake on and reached out to the uh, the tree. But I was just kind of like messing around, testing a few things as well. But yeah, I needed the, uh, the... I couldn't get any higher than I was, so I had to stick a winch to the tree just to make it up the rest. Which is not the end of the world. I mean, there's a fair few trucks that... that need that, really. There's only a f handful of trucks that make it up there with these slabs without any uh, assistance. But once we're on this road, again, not terrible. Clicking, mashing L1. It's funny, though, because in Phase 8, I was saying, like, it's kind of restricting you and making me stay in sort of fourth gear sometimes it'll let you have fifth out of eight gears in the high range uh, yeah going back on all like the original maps and everything it's clearly some kind of gear cap going on in phase eight because it was not an issue on any of the maps again because the vehicle sits lower than you'd think it clipped the uh, the legs of the trailer but I actually just about made it down here nearly tipped at one point but yeah fairly planted again it's it's not prone to tip in by any means. It's not really been an issue for most of the night, except for places like the rolling test on the uh, Northport map, and then now I'm purposely making it tip. And funnily enough, you get it rarely, <laughs> but I actually managed to do a full 360. The second cargo slipped back in there, that's what she said. Um, yeah, it was. That's a good example, though, of where the sideboard can kind of help a little bit, because obviously if that was a flatbed, there's not a chance that either one would have uh, followed me over, let alone like them when the rear piece of cargo kind of almost fell out of the trailer but slipped back in and it caught the sideboard so it landed back in there. Um, yeah, I was tipping it on purpose, sending the goddamn horse just as a rough gauge to kind of see how uh, how willing it is to flip back. And in the scheme of things, I mean, it's just a goddamn professional, get yourself a loaf. He's got a 100% rescue record, he flips everything. <laughs> So I can't strictly say that, you know, even vehicles that are awkward to flip, the loaf can flip. But yeah, all things considered, it wasn't really much of a an issue. And then uh, now on to Lake Cobb. Prime example though, no chain, so obviously normally I'd like to be driving straight along now, but got on a big fat Tokyo Drift, kind of do a big jump off that rock. Didn't quite carry the momentum over. And you can see there, when it sits on its side on a perfectly flat surface, it's kind of over the 90 degree angle so it won't just fire up the engines because it's kind of got a little bit of a narrow cab and again just doing the ice test now like just to do a u-turn you have to sort of be very light on the throttle and let it uh, drift its way around really but as far as the ice goes I managed to uh, get across every time I believe I did a little edit there just because I was trying to keep the video kind of I like to get it nearer 40 minutes if I can just a tad over but not too bad uh, yeah even driving just straight down as well there was a patch of ice that was already broken there I believe when you break the ice because the loaf's there if you keep a vehicle nearby it'll keep the ice broken so I don't know if there's many circumstances but if there is somewhere where you want to keep the ice broken once you've churned it up yeah park a vehicle or a trailer nearby and it won't reset it each time you uh, sort of you know go off the map and then reload it back up Managed to do the Jeff special, but again, without chained, a little bit iffy on like being able to steer it where I want, so it just kind of deleted itself on the uh, on the ice. As for floating, it's a bit of an odd one, this one. Sometimes I got it to sink. This time when I jumped in, it's floating above the snorkel, but then you can see there it suddenly just dropped straight down to the bottom. Jump in now, kind of sinks a bit. It starts tipping uh, to the right, I suppose, like on the, like, so it's dunking the snorkel side. <laughs> Sounds like a euphemism. Um, there is a bit of a current running along here, so as you can see, as I'm sort of trying to point the nose around, not that I don't really know how much control I have of that, but that's what I was aiming for. It started to level out a little bit to the point where just about, I mean, it might take the two damage, but the it just about leveled out, and then it floated at about that level for the rest of that test, but then 
I jumped in that water five or six times and uh, yeah, I kept getting different results and it was one of them and it's like, I don't really know. It's a hard one to call because it's like sometimes it sinks. I'd say most of the time it floats, but there was definitely a few times where it sank and then I had the, kind of the perfect bit of footage where it was floating and then it sank. Uh, getting across there, just about managed it, but again the floating starts to kick in, so I think at the deepest middle part of that river, it was a little bit, it was close. Uh, going down here, I managed to Jeff Special at this time, I actually kept it pretty straight and true. Hit the ramp, that's a pretty smooth jump, it's about as smooth as you're going to get. Uh, when I landed, deleted the fuel tanks pretty quickly, and the uh, suspension as well. But there, for some weird reason, I put it into high gear and it started saying stalling, which I've noticed it once or twice on some trucks. I won't really hold it against this, it's just that it's a bit of an oddity that happens sometimes, like clearly I'm going fast enough to where it's not stalling in high, but it decides it uh, tries to pretend it does. I don't know why I'm getting the sparks. Since phase 8 you get sparks off the wheels, but I usually notice it when I'm driving chained, whereas obviously this hasn't got chained, so I c it kind of makes sense with chains. Possibly anyway, not saying it would in real life, but you know what I mean. But the fact that there isn't metal wrapped around the wheels, uh, yeah, I don't know why it's still sparking. So did another jump, sent in the, uh, the goddamn horse, and as you can see, no real issues tipping. I've got the autonomous winch on this loaf. I personally would have preferred the uh, advanced winch, but I just, yeah, it was a loaf I grabbed and I just happened to have the autonomous on this one. Which is good in the sense of like, you know, even if you got unlucky and you landed some way that the loaf can't start its engine, you can still escape, fling a winch out. But um, obviously, I prefer the advanced winch in general because it's got more reach, a bit more length. It's never, never harmed anyone. But yeah, even with the roof rack on the uh, the step pike thing at this point as well, so I managed to kind of tip it right over. Going for a jump with the loaf. I mean, look at him; he's goddamn professional. He kept his winch on. He yoinked it back down the cliff, <laughs> then he kind of sits in the sideboard, flicks it back round to its wheels, and then gets himself to wheels. I mean, what a goddamn horse of a vehicle. Get yourself a loaf. That is what we've learned. <laughs> it's not too bad. I know, inevitably, some of these reviews turn into me fucking around with a loaf for the last five, ten minutes, but I was pretty good tonight. <laughs> or at least I've edited a fair amount of stuff out where I start fucking around with a loaf. But yeah, to his credit. The step pipe was about to get stuck halfway down the cliff. And the loafer uh, did save the day, double save the day. Yoinked him off the cliff and then did some kind of handstand and flicked him back to his wheels. You see, as we're driving in now to do like a drowning test, you can definitely tell it's getting light on the front wheels. It's not driving in as uh, decisively as it would do if it had full weight but then you see now like whereas a minute ago I jumped into the water and it was floating it's kind of floating now but it also can kind of go underwater again it's a, it is a little bit of an odd one it's slightly unpredictable I'd say in the scheme of things because I did test it multiple times what just happened now is probably a rough estimation of what's going to go on you are going to float but in general it's going to go deep enough to where it will take damage, it's not necessarily just going to do what a lot of other vehicles do and completely float. Going along here, I just left a little bit of this in, but I already knew it wasn't going to go uh, too well. I put the loaf on top, it doesn't pack because it's quite a narrow roof, but I purposely wanted to put the roof rack on and like sit the loaf as high as possible. I was going to attempt to zombie winch, and for the most part I, I was able to zombie winch it, but sometimes when you zombie winch, the vehicle you winch into starts steering left or right, and this thing started steering to the right, I believe it was. And yeah, I just knew in the scheme of things, it. long story short, it's not a vehicle I'd uh, pick to be crossing like this river, so rather than eat too much of my time up with uh, messing around with that, I thought, yeah, I'll just save a bit more, a bit more room for other clips where, that are a bit more relevant. Climbing up here, though, no issues climbing up here. I've got the pace by now. I was going to say, if you're going a bit slower, yeah, you can, they get a little bit skiddy on these rocks if you haven't got chained, but it's pretty relaxed at getting into the high gear. And uh, once I had the pace, it was not an issue. Possible thumbnail there? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to pick it at the end, we'll see. And then I did fly down that hill. I hit the tree at the bottom, but I had no chance of knocking it over. Most don't. The Zicks, the Cloths, or those monster sized trucks kind of knock the tree down that's down there, but uh, yeah, stuff this size and weight doesn't really stand much of a chance. 
and then I don't know, just because why not go for a tipping test? You can see it takes some fat hits on the uh, the fuel tanks and the suspension particularly seem to take damage pretty easily and quite a fat chunk of damage as well. After there was quite a few times tonight where it was always those two at least, like the fuel tank and the suspension that uh, go quite quickly. I mean the suspension you can kind of say fair enough because that's the thing you keep smashing down onto but I'd certainly say the fuel tanks quite often uh, moan but again at least you can have a roof rack on this so you've got enough to fix it. I don't think there's like a massive amount of health on the fuel tank as well so it's not like it's eating 200 repair points each time so you, in theory you should be able to fix it a couple of times and uh, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Overall, I'd certainly say it's a decent vehicle. Obviously, if you've got Phase 8, it's worth getting because it's kind of free once you've got Phase 8. Um, yeah, the biggest drawbacks for me, I'd say, are the 43-inch tyres. I'd certainly prefer they'd be nearer to 50. It'd be better. Uh, the lack of chain is a little bit of an issue as well. And then, yeah, maybe the damage it takes on the uh, the fuel tanks, but it's not the end of the world. Money-wise, not too bad, even when it's fully done up. I think it was around 120,000. And now is it about 78, 79 or something to uh, buy it stock? I was noticed as well, just quickly. It's like this step crocodile thing. Is that like 16,000? It was one of them. I was like practically rubbing my eyes thinking, is this, is it really that cheap? It's a bargain if it is. Uh, I'll have to test it at one point because otherwise it's like a cursed vehicle that thing is so every time I try and test it something goes wrong um, but yeah that's it overall I'd say it's a pretty decent vehicle it's certainly one of the nicer vehicles we've been given over like the different phases so uh, yeah worth grabbing <laughs> that's what she said but anyway that's about it for today I hope you've enjoyed I hope that helps thanks for watching thanks to my Patreon members get to have a loaf because he's a beast and I'll be back soon